Good everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Rena, your sister in Christ. And we are continuing on with the book of Enoch. Um, very exciting. Um, we are going to, first of all, I wanted to read to you the passage in Enoch today. It's kind of like a little bonus plus to skip ahead just a tad. And I'm just going to read one verse that's out of chapter 50 which I believe this verse here is all about the rapture and the transformation, the mystery, which in which Paul speaks about. And he talks about that there will be in the twinkling of an eye, there will be a change. Okay, so all shall be changed and in the twinkling of an eye. And so listen to this. Chapter 50. And in those days, a change shall take place for the holy and elect. And the light of days shall abide on them. And glory and honor shall turn to the holy. Wow. You could take this piece by piece apart. And verse 2 says, On the day of trouble, affliction will be heaped on the evil. And the righteous shall be victorious in the name of the Lord of Spirits, Jesus, Yeshua, the Christ, Emmanuel, and the Almighty God, El, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But this is what it says. It says, and the righteous shall be victorious in the name of the Lord of Spirits, for he will tell this to others that they may repent and turn away from the works of their hands. So, in my opinion, the whole reason, part of the reason for the rapture, resurrection event to take place is so that people will see this and will repent and will turn back to the Lord. And so, if you're coming across this video and you've never seen me, I would just like to preach quickly 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Okay, Jesus came to the earth, fully man, fully God, the firmament, and he died for all of us, every single one of us, our past, present, and future sins. No, it doesn't give you a license to sin, but nobody can be like Jesus Christ. Jesus was perfect. Emmanuel, Yeshua is perfect. Okay, he led a sinless life. He is God in the flesh incarnate. He died for your sins, and what happens after you realize this is you want to confess and repent to him for all of your disobedience throughout, like, the years, you know? Like, when you were little, we all come out with the sin nature, right? So, you can't help it. Everybody's lied. Everybody's stolen. Everybody's, you know, most people, unless they come raised up, by a mother and a father who are in marriage with a covenant with the Lord, okay? This is very important, okay? Those children sometimes turn out really, really good. They get raised up and they're good, and that's okay. But unless you have a mother and father that are both strong, firm believers, um, it just happens, okay? We, in our little childlike state, which it also says... You will not enter into the kingdom unless you have, like you are like a child, okay? So we all must understand that everybody is just only human. We all err. We all make mistakes and nobody's perfect except for Yeshua. So, okay, so you call upon his name after you repent and confess out loud that he is Lord and King of kings to all that you possibly can. Okay, and then D, deliverance demonstrated upon water baptism. You must be reborn. You must be taken and born out of the kingdom of darkness and back into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and it says that once we are baptized and we receive the Holy Spirit, that we're seated already in heavenly places with the Lord. Can you be in two places at one time? Well, I, I find myself asking these questions. Um, so, but what we're going to do, because I don't like to go too long, y'all, because I know everybody has things to do. It's happy Sabbath to all of you as well. 
I'm going to go back, though, and I'm going to start from Chapter 8, okay? Because there's a few things in here that I wanted to talk about, but we're going to just read. We're not going to take too much of a break in me speaking anymore. I'm just going to read and then pray that you all take it to heart and understand from when I was a very uh, young lady. It was before I turned 21. Before, when I was 21, I dreamt that Russia nuked us and the rapture happened in my dream. Okay, this is before I even got saved. Um, we are coming into serious times, so it's important not to fear whatsoever because the cowardly also do not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So you just don't want to have any fear and just put all your trust in the Lord. Give it to him and lean upon not your own understanding because there's some of us like me, I'm one of them, that I can read scripture and and I will uh, not understand certain things. And so you just have to ask the Holy Spirit because if you let him, he will teach you and he will guide you and he will transform you into somebody, a new creature. That's what it talks about. You become a new creature. So it's really amazing. And um, just wanted you all to know that I love you all out there, each and every single one of you. And if you need prayers or if you even just need to talk, my uh, email address is listed in the description box. Um, but let's go ahead and read. Okay, so I'm going to read chapter 8. And Azazel, which is the fallen angel, taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and taught them about the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids which is makeup and all kinds of precious stones and all coloring and dyes and there was great impiety they turned away from god do you understand how all of this with <sighs> okay, the makeup and then the dyes and dressing and the apparel and everything else could make you turn to more lustful desires because that's really not what God, when he put us, when we ended up here, okay, which there's reason for everything, but when we ended up here, that was not supposed to be the case. We were not supposed to like partake in all of this nonsensical witchcraft and sorcery which is exactly what it is it's coming to it now so they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways now matthew 5 19 reads anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so makeup is one of those things. And I'm wearing a little bit of lipstick or whatever lip balm, but no, I don't wear makeup um, to the point of like, you know. Um, but some people do. Um, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that either, okay? I'm just asking you to listen to this book and what led to like so many people being led astray, okay? And uh, Simjaza, that's another fallen angel, taught the casting of spells and root cuttings. And uh, Arameos taught counter spells, which is the release from spells. Berejikel taught astrology, okay? Astrology, that's why we're not to partake in astrology. Um, and it also says Cacabel taught the constellations. Now, constellations, a little bit different because Jesus said there would be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And stars make up constellations. So there's nothing wrong with watching that, I believe. Um, it's called the Maserath, and a lot of people do. And the thing is, is that this thing is going around us we're in a fixed position in the firmament and there is a dome that's above us just like in the hunger games just like they do in the simpsons just like they do in every single show showing us that we are indeed in an enclosed system if you even google um the old white house first lady whose initials are H.C., and I'm sure you can figure that out quickly, she even jokes about how an N-U-K-E, whatever you want to call that, how they blasted it up, 
and how it put 18 million cracks in that glass ceiling up above. It's very obvious, okay? And then, again, watch when SpaceX or NASA, when they take off, when their rockets take off, do they just go straight up, 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 till you can't see them anymore? Or do they just go like this? Uh, yeah, they definitely rear to the left or to the right, okay? They can't go straight up. They crash right into the firmament. So... We have uh, much truth coming out in this right now. So let's just continue. Now the constellations, okay, which they're called portents. Not only are they called P-O-R-T-E-N-T-S, but anything that is a planet up in space, like satellites, whatever. When you look up satellite... Do you know what it means? It means artificial planet. So the moon, I believe, is an artificial planet all the way. But um, I also believe that God is in charge of everything. And when he told me in 2016 that it's really like the movie Star Wars, I thought I was losing my mind. But apparently not, okay? We have, uh, we have a space force now, and then we have all these huge ships that are like mother ships, and it goes all the way back to 4-8. Just look at it. 4-8 was definitely something that is, uh, I question whether or not that was really the sun, but that's just my theory about it, and I could be wrong. Now, um, I'm going to go on. Let's get going on this. Um, Shemaziel, Shemaziel. Uh, is the one that uh, taught the signs of the sun. Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Okay. And then we have Erekel, the signs of the earth. Shamziel, the signs of the sun. And Sariel, the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried. And their cries went up to heaven. Okay, and Jasher, this is from the book of Jasher, chapter 4, 18, verse through 20. And this is what they're doing right now. And their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and taught the mixture of animals of one species with the other in order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth and it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted its ways on earth, all men and all animals. And the Lord said, I will blot out man that I created him from the face of the earth. <clears throat> From man to the birds of the air together with cattle and beasts that are in the field, for I repent that I made them. And all men who walked in the ways of the Lord died in those days. Methuselah, who was 969 years old, he's the oldest in the Bible that we have on record as living the longest. He died exactly one week before the flood. And that's the day that God shut the door and Noah and his sons and the wives, they were all waiting for one week. They were shut in to the boat. I am actually also here to get everybody on the ark. Everybody needs to get on the ark, okay? I've been getting signs that the rapture is so close, you guys. You have no idea how close I feel like we really are. And I may be wrong, but still, I've been given signs that are just incredible. But I'm not going to share those because people always just say, ah, yeah, right, you know. So, but ask the Lord yourself, okay? Ask him yourself. I'm not going to speak about it. I never do give dates or anything like that. But I do feel like there is something getting ready to happen very soon. And that's just my thought from my inner being um, I've had some things happen over this last week that are incredibly crazy, and um, it's just there's no explanation except that. That could be it. So <clears throat> let's go to chapter 9. Plus, we know that Sister Brenda, she was given a vision, and as soon as Taiwan was attacked by China, that was a key also sign that 
things are getting very close to the rapture, okay? We don't know what date. She never said states either. But um, anyways, Good Sister in Christ, you should go check out her channel. Um, she wrote a book called Kingdom of Priests. That book helped me so much, understand so many things about the book of Revelation, and also just our role, okay? Um, love you, Sister Brenda, if you happen to see this. Love you very much. So, okay, we're going to go on to chapter 9. And then Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed on the earth and all lawlessness being done on the earth. And they said to one another, let the cries from the destruction of earth ascend up to the gates of heaven. And now do you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men, make their petition, saying, bring our cause before the most high. And they said to the Lord of ages, Lord of lords, God of gods, King of kings and God of the ages, the throne of your glory endures through all the generation generations of the ages in your name holy and glorious and blessed to all the ages okay exclamation point first timothy 6 verses 15 and 16 which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate the king of kings the lord of lords who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach, no man can approach onto it, whom no man hath seen or nor can see, to whom to be honor and power everlasting. Amen. All right. You have made all things and you have power over all things and all things are revealed and open in your sight and you see all things and nothing can hide itself from you. Look at what Azazel has done, who had taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were made and kept in heaven, which men were striving to learn. And Simjaza, who taught spells, to whom you gave authority to rule over his associates. And they have gone to the daughters of men on the earth and have had sex with the women and have defiled themselves. And revealed to them all kinds of sins. Genesis 6, 4. There were giants on the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they had bore children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. Verse 9. And the women have borne giants and the whole earth has thereby been filled with blood and unrighteousness. Genesis 6 verses 5 and 6 and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only continually evil and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. So verse 10, and now behold, the souls of those who have died are crying out and making their petition to the gates of heaven. And their lament has ascended and cannot cease because the lawless deeds which are done on the earth. And you know all things before they come to pass. And you see these things and you have permitted them and say nothing to us about these things. What are we to do about them? about these things. Revelation 6 verse 10. They called out in a loud voice, how long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood. Chapter 10. Then the Most High, the Great and Holy One, he said to Uriel, go, Uriel, to the son of Lamech. Okay, who's the son of Lamech? Anybody know? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Say to him, go to Noah. So it has to be Methuselah, I believe. Go to him, go to Noah and tell him in my name, hide yourself and reveal to him that the end is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed and a flood is about to come on the whole earth and will destroy everything on it. Genesis 7 verse 4. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made 
will I destroy from off the face of the earth. Verse 3, and now instruct him as to what he must do to escape, that his offspring may be preserved for all the generations of the world. Okay, Genesis 6, 6, verse 13 and 14. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And again the Lord said to Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot, and cast him into the darkness, and split open the desert which is in Duduile. Now I know I read this last week, but I wanted to go over this again. Um, and cast him in, and fill the hole by covering him with rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him live there forever, and cover his face that he may not see the light. Okay? Now... I told you that I thought, oh, there's something wrong when it said the, the angel of the bottomless pit, but this is a separate occasion here. Revelation 21 through 3, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Yippee! Woohoo! All right. And... Put a seal upon him that he shall deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a little season. And on that day of great judgment, shall he be hurled into the fire. Okay. Verse seven. And heal the earth with which the angels have ruined. It says the angels have ruined. Okay. And proclaim the healing of the earth, for I will restore the earth and heal the plague, that not all of the children of men may perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. Okay, Romans 8, 18. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us for the on earnest expectation of the creature of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who hath subject subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God wow because half your side half your body the right side, belong, man, the flesh is owned by Satan, but the right hand side belongs to the Lord, okay? So you always want to do things like on your right side. The right hand is always the best side of everything, okay? Your left side is no good, but anyways, uh, it's just bizarre about that part. Okay, so all sin will be ascribed to Azazel since the earth was corrupted through the works that Azazel taught. To Gabrielle said the Lord, proceed against the bastards and the reprobates and against the children of fornication and destroy the children of fornication and the children of the watchers. Cause them to go against one another that they may destroy each other in battle. Shorten their days. So... They, of course, got into a big, huge battle. I'm sure the earth was shaking because it says that some of these giants were two miles tall. Okay, Genesis 6, 7, and 8. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both men and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now back to verse 10 in Enoch. No request that the watchers or their fathers make of you shall be granted them on their behalf, for they hope to live an eternal life and that each one will live 500 years. I just laugh every time I hear that. And the Lord said to Michael, go, bind some Jaza and his team who have associated with women and have defiled themselves in all their uncleanness. When their sons have slain one another... And they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones. 
bind them fast for 70 generations under the hills of the earth. Okay, so you see all those hills like pyramids and then you have the mounds. You have the mounds. They have found, Smithsonian has covered so much up, but they have found bones from giants all over the earth. So, yes, Brooklyn? I was just asking. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. So, okay, when their sons have slain one another and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, so they were made to watch. All of these giants were made uh, to go to battle and all of their fathers were made to watch the destruction of their children for going against the Lord God and doing something that they shouldn't have. And these were very, very wicked beings, entities, okay? They hate you and I. They are Satans. I would say plural, Satans, because it's not just about Lucifer, okay? There is a whole bunch of them. Now, yes, there is a hierarchy, but there is a bunch of them, y'all, okay? So you just need to anoint your homes, the hedges and the doors, the windows, I would definitely put your armor. This is what I do. Brooklyn and I, we every single day, we ask the Lord to put our spiritual armor on us. We ask him to put to prepare us for whatever the day will bring. But we have our spiritual armor on, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The breastplate of righteousness is on. Our helmet of salvation is over our head. The breastplate protecting our hearts so that we can continuously love the Lord with all our heart. The helmet of salvation for protecting our head, so we can love him with all, our, all of our mind as well, and our soul. And then the shield of faith, to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked ones, wicked ones, and the sword in the spirit, which is the word of God, the walking Jesus, Yeshua, Emmanuel, he is the word. He became flesh and he came into the system here, this twin system. It's twos. Everything is in twos. And he definitely came in to get us back. He came to get his children back. Okay. Um, yeah. So now in... Uh, when their sons have slain one another and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for 70 generations. What's crazy is when that is up to 70 generations, it's right around 1948, 40-ish, I don't know, somewhere right around there. What happened? Technology happened, didn't it? What a rise in technology all of a sudden within the last couple, I mean, 70 years, even think about that. Just think about the last 70 years, how far technology has come, right? Okay, so what you would do when you got 70 generations, you would use each generation is considered to be, five, uh, it would be, 70 generations of 500 years. So the, to the total would be 3,500 because you take 500 times 70. Okay, so that's 3,500 years. In those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire and to the torment and the prison in which they shall be confined forever. Then some jaza shall be burnt up with the condemned and they will be destroyed, having been bound together with them to the end of all generations. Now here, this is a little fragment from the book of Giants. Listen to this. And he answered, I am a giant, and by the mighty strength of my arm and my own great strength, I can defeat anyone mortal. And I have made war against them, but I am not strong enough for our heavenly opponent or to be able to stand against them, for my opponents reside in heaven, and they dwell in the holy places and not on the earth, and they are stronger than I. The time of the wild beast has come, and the wild man calls me. 
Then Elias said to him, I have been forced to have a dream, and the sleep of my eyes vanished in order to let me see a vision. Now I know that on Gilgamesh our futures rest. Hmm. Well, apparently he just admitted in the book of Giants that the angels... They cannot beat the angels. Yes, they can beat us because we are just mortals. We are just blood, human and flat. We are flesh and blood. But when it comes to the spiritual entities in heaven, angels, no, they cannot do anything. They get their butts wiped out by uh, the angels. So I'm only going to go on just a teensy bit more because we did make it past the last time. But so... Verse 16, destroy all wrong from the face of the earth and let every evil work come to an end and let the earth be planted with righteousness. Mm -hmm. The plant of righteousness and truth appear and it shall prove a blessing. The works of righteousness and truth shall be planted in truth and joy forevermore. And then shall all the righteous survive and shall live until they begot thousands of children. And all the days of their youth and their old age shall they complete in peace. And then shall the whole earth be untilled in righteousness and shall be planted with trees and full, full of blessing. And all desirable trees shall be planted on it, and they shall plant vines on it. And the vine which they plant shall yield fruit in abundance. And as for all the seed which is sown, each measurement of it shall bear a thousand, and each measurement of olives shall yield ten presses of oil. You shall cleanse the earth from all oppression, and from all unrighteousness, and from all sin, and from all ungod from all godlessness, and all the uncleanness that is brought on the earth, you shall destroy from off the earth. All the children of men shall become righteous, and all nations shall offer adoration, and shall praise me, and all shall worship me. And the earth shall be cleansed from all defilement and from all sin and from all punishment and from all torment. And I will never again send another flood from this generation to all generations and forever. Now I'm going to finish chapter 11. And in those days I will open the storehouse of blessings in heaven and rain down blessings on the earth and over the work and labor of the children of men. Malachi 3 verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Hmm, I think it's speaking about the millennial reign. I mean, really. Okay, verse 2. Truth and peace shall be united throughout all the days of the world and throughout all the generations of men. I really do believe this, that we're speaking about uh, the beginning. When you go back to the beginning in Genesis, it brings you into the end. And it really reveals a lot as far as like what's going to be going on during the millennial reign. Um, chapter 12. Then Enoch disappeared, and no one of the children of men knew where he was hidden and where he abode. Okay, so Genesis 5, 21 says, And Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years. And he had sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So it's like 726 in the Strong's Concordance. He was caught away, caught up 
and he was raptured uh, from the earth to be taken, I believe because of the fact that he dealt with the fallen angels, and so in the Son of Man shall come again during the days, like the days of Noah, Enoch and Elijah are the two that did not pass away. They both have their mortal lives left, and the two witnesses, remember, die in chapter 11 of the book of Revelation. So these two men were set aside for this specifically, and I do believe because Elijah was the one that fought all of those, uh, the bad, what was it, King Ahab and his wife, the Jezebel, she was wicked, right? And he was the one that definitely called down fire and like scared a bunch of them. There was like 400 of her prophets against Elijah. And then now I feel like going having like a, a second Kings chapter 19 moment and sitting under like a juniper tree, if I'm quoting the right verse. So Elijah went and hid under a juniper tree and he was just so, so like, what am I going to do, Lord? What am I going to do? Okay. Well, he was removed shortly thereafter. Um, and then also Enoch dealt with the fallen angels and they were terrified of Enoch because they knew that Enoch had a great relationship with the Lord and walked upright with the Lord. And these angels, they tore up the earth with their abomin abominable acts and they, the, the Lord wouldn't even let them, they couldn't even look up. They were so sh full of shame they had, they were, there was no way that they could even speak with the Lord anymore. They were not permitted to speak with the Lord. And so Enoch is the one that handled all of it. And so that's easy to see him coming back as the, one of the two witnesses that we hear about in Revelation chapter 11. So I'm going to finish this up and then we'll be done, everybody. All right, so. They're wondering what happened to Enoch. So they're like, and what had become of him? And his activities were with the holy ones and the watchers. That's that class of angels. And I, Enoch, was blessing the Lord of majesty and the king of the ages. And lo, the watchers called me Enoch, the scribe, and said to me, Enoch, you scribe of righteousness, go, tell the watchers of heaven, this is God telling, or the angels telling Enoch, that he's going to have to go and like sentence them to this huge judgment. So he says, Enoch, you scribe of righteousness, go tell the watchers of heaven who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, and have done as the children of earth do, and have taken to themselves wives. You have done great destruction on the earth, and you shall have no peace nor forgiveness of sin. Since they delight themselves in their children, they shall see the murder of their beloved ones, and the destruction of their children, and and they shall lament and shall make supplication forever. You will receive neither mercy nor peace. Okay, so that ends chapter 12. Um, I'm going to do another one tomorrow, y'all. I just wanted to say I love you. Let me get my teddy. My lammy, excuse me. This is my lammy. Giving you a big hug from me to you. And... Um, just hang in there, everybody, because Jesus is coming and he is king. And um, please let me know if you need any prayers uh, or if you'd like to speak. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll do my best to help you um, answer that question. So all blessings and honor and glory and power unto our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Christ. And uh, everybody just keep on praying. All right. Love y'all. Have a good one. And we have a beautiful day here as well. Like, let me just show you super quick because I like to show you how fluffy the clouds look. They look really fluffy today. Super fluffy and really caught. They're like cotton balls. They're not like spring, you know. Brooklyn, you've got a tan today. Oh, well. I'm going to let y'all go. I love y'all again and uh, be good. Bye.